Well, I want everybody welcome again to the Fab Four podcast brought to you by Hatcher Auto Sales out on the old uh, Lebanon Road, uh, or new Lebanon Road, rather. Uh, if you need uh, any uh, new car or, or remake of a car, or rebuild of a car, make sure you stop by and see Daniel and Danny out there. Uh, they've been very good to the Fab Four podcast, and so we appreciate uh, our sponsors. If, they'd, if you would uh, stop in, tell them we sent you, and uh, maybe they'll give you a discount. I can't guarantee that, but we'll, we'll <laughs> You just do what you can do. Uh, today's guest, um, well, first let me introduce our uh, Fab Three guest anyway. Uh, first, we've got a 19, uh, I'm sorry, a two, what, when did you graduate, Alec? 2018. 2018 graduate of Taylor County High School. A 1985 graduate, the old Frank, Frankster Franklin, the big head. 1985 Campbellsville graduate and of course, I hail from Adair County, a 1985 graduate, the old men, uh, bringing it to you today. All right, so on today's podcast, guys, we've got the uh, football coaches, the head football coaches, respectively, from Campbellsville High School, Mr. Dale Estes. Dale, how are you today? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Hey, well, thanks for joining us. Also, we have Sam Marple, the head football coach of Taylor County. Coach, how are you today? Doing good. How are you guys? Doing good. Now, me and Sam have the uh, the the great thing here of he's just across the hall from me in his office. <laughs> and I'm in my office. So I don't hear an echo, though, so you're all right. <laughs> there you go. All right. So, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to ask you some questions, talk about your upcoming football season and the craziness and all this stuff going on. So, give you an opportunity to brag on your kids, brag on your program. And, uh, so Alec, we'll go ahead and start with you. All right. Um, Dale, first to you. Uh, for the people that, if they're not from Campbellsville, Taylor County area, tell them where you graduated from, where you went to college, and then your football coaching career, how, where it's taking you to. Yes, I'm a 1995 graduate of Campbellsville High School. Um, after that, I went, went to Campbellsville University, and I'm a 2000 graduate of there. And then start of uh, December of 2000, I got a job at uh, Campbellsville, the independent school system. I've been here ever since. This is year number 22, believe it or not of uh, teaching. That's crazy that it's flown by that, that, that fast. Uh, I started coaching, though, back in 1995 when I graduated high school. Perry Thomas was the head coach here at Camelsville High School, and he wanted me to get – he knew I was wanting to get into teaching and coaching, and uh, he got me involved with our middle school, and I helped out down there for several years. And then I came up and was an assistant at the high school for several years, and then the last – this will be my ninth year that I've been the head coach at Camelsville High School. And, uh, you know, I'm a Camelsville born and raised. I've been here in this community. Uh, I married uh, uh, my lovely wife. She's from this community. We got two wonderful kids. And, uh, you know, I, I love this place. Uh, this place is home to me, always will be. And uh, it's a great, great place to be. And, uh, you know, everything I've done uh, has been because of people in this community that's helped me. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what I try to do now. And I try to get our players to understand that uh, we need to give back. And so, uh, you know, with that, with all that being said, uh, you know, this, like I said, be my ninth year. And uh, as, as far as being a head coach, but my whole coaching career, I've coached football, I've coached basketball, I've coached baseball. I've been involved in youth sports uh, through this community. So uh, put a lot of time and effort and, and things into kids. And I truly believe that's what God has called me to do. And I enjoy every minute of it. Sam, same question to you as well. Well, I am a uh, 2001 graduate from Casey County High School. Uh, after that, I went to college and played football at Moorhead State University. Uh, actually ended up playing my last year of college football at the University of Cumberland over in Williamsburg and uh, graduated from there. Uh, after I graduated, I worked, uh, got out of school and I, I knew I wanted to teach and coach. It just wasn't hardly time. So I worked in, I actually worked construction for a year or two and now I've, um, I think this is my 12th year in education, 11th, somewhere right around there, 11th or 12th year in education and coaching. Uh, I've been at four different schools. I've, uh, been an assist, I've been an assistant coach at Casey County. I've been a head coach at Casey County for five years. I worked at Henderson County out in Western Kentucky and um, also went, uh, was come here at Taylor County for, one, for a year. Went out to Eastern Kentucky to Bell County for two years. Now I'm back here as a head coach. This is my second year at Taylor County. Um, 
Um, I've got two little girls, uh, uh, Layla, who is uh, 11, and then I've got a four-year-old, Tommy, and my fiance, Kayla. And like I said, we've been, like Dale said, you know, Campbellsville has been a great place to live and living in the community. And uh, so I'm not like Dale. Dale's coached all these other sports, and basketball and baseball and all that stuff. I, would, I, I wanted to play basketball in high school and try it. I wanted to be that 6'3", 270-pound kid that come out around the three-point line and rain down threes. But I, I realized that wasn't my skill set. So I just kind of ever since freshman year of high school, I've been stuck with football. Scott? I'm so old that Dale grew up down the street from me. He was a little bitty old fart back then, and he grew up right down the street from me. And Sam yeah. Marples, I was coaching when Sam was playing high school. So, you know, I'm old, man. I'm just glad to be here. <laughs> By the way, y'all said y'all was in y'all's offices. What y'all in offices for, anyway? <laughs> y'all working? <Yeah. laughs> oh, my bad. I forgot. It's during the daytime right here. I'm sorry. You're forgot. Hey, You're I retired, Frank. <laughs> yeah. I, I got a question for each coach. Uh, and, and Dale, you, you had a tremendous player last year, Malachi Corley, now at Western Kentucky University. Coach Sam had a, a, a player in Trey Gooden, uh, who's now at Eastern Kentucky. Both of them did a lot of things for your teams. Dale explained to us some guys that may fill a role, because I know Malachi played a lot of roles. Who, who's filling that role for you and Coach Sam? Who's filling in some of the ways that Trey affected your game plans last year? Uh. Well, I, I tell you this, you know, and Malachi was a great player, and uh, we've been fortunate the last few years to have several athletes. But, uh, you know, two kids come to my mind right now, actually three really when you ask that question. Of course, we got our quarterback back. You know, he, he makes everything go. You know, he's been a four-year starter, and anybody that knows anything about the game of football knows if you got a trigger man, you know, you, you, it, it makes things a little easier. You know, and, and he's been very good. But as far as the athlete role, as far as stepping in, taking a lot of that. Reggie Thomas will be up there. He's back. Uh, he was number five last year, had a great year as a junior. And he's had a great year as freshman and sophomores, but also Blaze Wheatley. You know, those are two kids that, uh, that are going to touch the ball a lot for us. And uh, they're athletes. They run well. They catch the ball well. Uh, they're fun to coach. They work hard. And so those two young men, you know, are going to have to step in there this year and, and take that roll over when it's third and four instead of getting the ball to Malachi. Those two young men are going to step in there, and I have the utmost confidence in both of them, and I think they'll do it. And they, they, they've been working hard, and, uh, you know, they've earned their, uh, they've earned their shot, and, and they're going to get it this year. And I think, you know, when you ask me that question, those two guys are seniors. And they come to mind. And there will be some other kids that's uh, – that also will step them at the play. But, we, you know, we're asking those two gentlemen to do a lot for us this year. Uh, I mean, I, I don't really know if you replace, like, the two names of the young man you said, uh, Trey Gooden and Malachi and those guys. I don't know if you really replace them type of players. I do think uh, those are special kids that you get ever so often that you named off. And I do think as a coach, when you get those kids, it's really important of – not only when you have kids like that, what are you doing because those kids are there to develop the kids around them? Because so when they leave, I guess the question you got to ask is, is your football program going to be better when they left than what it was when they're, or, or are you just leaning on their skill and ability? And, you know, that was one thing we really, I think we've done a pretty good job of here is we've tried to work. We know we're not going to replace what Trey could do for us last year at a couple of spots, but while Trey was here, you know, we tried to make sure we were developing those role kids and the talent and the people around him to help make us be a better football team next year. And, you know, uh, I mean, I'm looking at us and we've got uh, uh, we've got 10 guys coming back on defense that's got experience that played for us last year. So we lose one, you know, you lose one really good, the best, probably the best player, the most dynamic player on the field. But you've still got 10 guys coming back on defense that's got experience for you. And, I, you know, I just uh, – I hope that we've done a really good job of, you know, while we have that guy there helping surround to make the rest of the people around him better. Um, as far as like this personnel change, you know, with Trey being gone, it has been a little bit of a bind this summer trying to find exactly who was going to, trying to get your kids in the right role. Who was going to fill this position? Do we have to adapt to move that? But really, that happens every year in 3A or smaller high school football when you move down. You're always looking at – that's your biggest thing as a coach, making sure you get your kids in the right position. And sometimes the right position for your team is uh, kind of out of position for the kid. You, you run if that makes sense. So, you know, I think that's 
that just kind of that's really what we try to do. We've just tried over the last year to make sure that uh, we're developing these kids. So when when Trey was gone, we were a better football team, even though we may not have the best player back on there again. Well, uh, my question to both of you, obviously, is, uh, you know, I'd like for you to, uh, if you could, just talk about some of the returning players and uh, at the different positions. I know you might not have your roster in front of you, but uh, give those kids a shout. I kind of, I know you may not have settled on your all your starters, but uh, if you could on your offensive side of the football, if you would run some of those names down and uh, just a little bit of, you know, a little plug for those kids and uh, kind of what they're good at, so to speak, you know, a little positive for them. On uh, on offense, we've got um, our offensive line. We got almost our whole offensive line back this year. So four out of the five of our offensive line guys coming back: Jake, Jason, Bright, Clay, Corbin, Connor, Dishman, uh, Hayes, Johnson's going. So three out of the five is back, and we we're we're putting two new faces up there with Hayes, Johnson, and Jackson now. So uh, we we you know last year we come into the year and we thought the biggest weak point we had was probably our offensive line and it developed in towards the end of the year we felt like that was our strength and really working into this summer again that looks like that's one of our stronger units for us is we've got some guys up there that can play of course coming back at your running back your playmaker you got Wes Wes Oliver who uh, you know we're just you know you want to make sure he stays healthy but at the same time you're giving him the ball enough to do work. Uh, on offense, probably the big thing for us is we've really worked hard through the winter and the spring and the summer to uh, develop a stronger passing game. You know, I thought last year you looked at us and a lot of people, and early on they were so much, you know, you got to stop Taylor County's run and stop Taylor County's run. But I, I thought as we made our runs in the playoffs and stuff, what really helped us do that was our passing game. And we completed, you know, it wasn't that we threw the ball that much, but we were really efficient when we did throw the ball. And I think that's something this year that's going to maybe be a little bit of a surprise or I think that's something we can do better is uh, being able to throw the ball more in early downs. You know, we've got Connor Roney and Carson Watson and uh, Dave Thornton and a freshman, Caden Smith. And uh, I think a lot of people is really going to be surprised. That's your receiving core. And I think a lot of people is really going to be surprised at how, how much uh, better Ethan Cockhill's got at the quarterback position. You know, again, he's getting ready to be a senior. Uh, he's uh, He's been on uh, two back-to-back -back region championship teams now. And he's just one of those kids that just grow, got better work in the weight room. He's done everything we ask him to do. And he's just uh, – he may not always be the best at everything, but he's just a competitor, and that's the kind of kid you want. And his arm, you know, I think he's really his just his arm and being able to throw the ball down the field. And I think that's a big key if you're going to be able to throw the ball in early downs in high school football. You got to be able to push the ball down the field a little bit. And uh, I think we've got a couple big receiving. You know, we look you line us up at a wideout right now. We can put three kids out there at six three or more, three three or four kids at six three, and now we got a kid that can throw the ball down the field. And you know that that uh, and you got Wes Oliver in the backfield, so uh, you know we're pretty excited about what some of the kids can do on the offense. We think defensive side, we've got our uh, uh, whole starting defensive line in the box. We feel really good. Uh, Tyler Schaffner, Keyshawn, Joey, uh, Ben Bond, all those boys are back on the front. Roni and Gabe Wooden, uh, kind of where we, you're looking at is where we get a lot weaker on defense as a secondary. You're replacing some kids in the secondary that we that. Uh, that's gone from last year with Trey and some others. One good thing we do have in the secondary still is you got Carson Watson. And, you know, he led the state in interceptions last year and we got him back. So a lot of work to do, but we do got feel like we got some kids that can get in there and do what we need to do. Dale? Yes, uh, you know, we've had a lot of uh, two big senior classes last couple of years. And, uh, you know, we uh, lost a lot. I think we, I, if I remember correctly last year, we lost 12 seniors last year. And, uh, you know, a lot of kids have been playing a lot of football for us for a lot of years. But at the same time, we, we have several returning. Uh, I'll start on offense as well. Of course, at our quarterback position, like I mentioned a while ago, we got Aaron Hash, you know, four-year starter for us. Uh, you know, as a freshman and a sophomore, he led our school to back-to-back -back regional titles, uh, you know, third and fourth uh, regional title in school history. And uh, what some people may forget that first year that he won it as a freshman, he played the we played the uh, semifinals and regional championship. And he had a cast on his arm as a quarterback, and you know so we got him back. And then our athletes across, you know, we like to spread it a little bit and try to use our speed. But I can, you know, we got Reggie Thomas. Uh, you got Geo uh, Gideon Richards. We call him Geo. He's back this year, number twenty-one. Uh, we got uh, Blaze Wheatley. 
Uh, and then we got a couple other kids who are going to have to step in there. We got uh, a freshman, uh, a lot of people know him as a little man, DeAndre Weathers. He, he's going to step in there and help us a lot. And then we got uh, Cameron Smith. Uh, that's Kirby's boy. Cameron has come out and played for us this year and is doing an excellent job. And uh, and we got Logan Phillips. So we got about seven or eight guys that ever rotate. This is this has been the first time in a while that uh, that we feel like we got six or seven guys we can roll across there, you know, and and give some kids some break and not drop off tremendously like we have in the past, you know, and I'm trying to put a sub or something in there. So we've got a little depth this year, and then up front. Now, that's where our biggest hurdle is. I'm like Coach Marple. We lost a lot up there. And uh, really, to be honest with you, I think we only got a couple of kids back that got some, a lot of playing time as a lineman. That was Tyrese Washington and Bryson Williams. But we'll have Levi Dickin. We'll have uh, Big Carson Riley. And then uh, we got a couple other people battling up there, Alex Howard and a few other kids. Uh, the good thing about our offensive linemen is – is I, the Howard, the Washington, the Riley, and those kids that I mentioned, they're all seniors. So we're hoping, you know, they can step in there. And uh, they've been around the program the last three years, just hadn't got to play so much because we've had kids up there. So we're hoping they can step in and give us a good job there. At running back, you know, our running backs, receivers, all them kids I mentioned to you earlier, they got to play it all. Uh, well, we do have a kid that's uh, moved in here uh, from Chicago. His name is uh, Aaron Contreras. Uh, his two brothers has been here for the last three or four years, but he's a senior that's moved in uh, because his mama is battling some sickness, and he's moved down here to help her to be able to run the kids back and forth to practice and stuff. So he's going to step in and help us at the running back spot. And then I've also uh, been able to get Connor Forbes to come back out and play for us this year. He didn't play last year, so that's another kid that's going to step in there and help us at that spot as well. On defense, uh, our DBs uh, are pretty much the same people we had last year. Our free safety will be uh, Gideon Richards. Our two corners will be Blaze Wheatley and Aaron Hash. A lot of people may not realize this or not, but Aaron ended up starting cornerback for us last year and played it for majority of the season. Uh, linebackers will have Reggie Thomas, Aaron Contreras, uh, uh, DeAndre Weathers, and uh, Connor Forbes. And then up front, you know, it'll be uh, it'll be by committee. Those people I mentioned earlier, Tyrese Washington, Bryson Williams, uh, uh, big man, uh, little man's brother, Key Andre, and, uh, you know, a uh, few of those other kids are rolling there too and stuff. But uh, I think we have five or six kids returning back on both sides of the ball. So we lost a lot, but we also at a small school to have five or six kids returning starters back. That also, you know, that's not that bad, uh, returning starters as far as you talk about a Class A, class a program. Alex? Uh, coaches, talk about your uh, assistant coaches y'all have on staff and in your support staff. Because we all know that without them, your job is going to be a whole lot more difficult without them. Yeah. Uh, first, I, you know, I, I've uh, my assistant coaches is Herb Wiseman. He's been with me. He's been around here a long time. A lot of people know Coach Wiseman. Been up to college. Uh, I guess the question is, Dale, Dale, the question is who doesn't know Herb? <laughs> I agree. You know, Herb does a great job, man. I tell you, he's my right-hand man. Uh, you know, he's been a head coach here, too. He, You know, he's one of them guys you can go to because he's been a head coach, you know, and, and, and some of those things, if you got that, you know, question and stuff. So, Herb does a great job. I've got Tyler Hardy with me now. He's been with me the last three or four years. I've got uh, Will Griffin. Will's going to take over my offense. Uh and I, I'm going back, taking over the defensive side of the ball, and he's going to take over my offense. I got Aaron Webb, and then I got Quincy Travis. So all those guys have been with me uh, the last uh, four or five years, except for Quincy. Quincy Travis has come on board. He played over at Camels University. He's a Paducah Tillman graduate. He's been a great asset to our staff. And when we talk about support staff people, you know, my filmer, Garen Hash, been filming filming for eight years now because I had Austin before I had Aaron. And so, you know, you, you, I can't speak enough good about that. I think Coach Marples will, will echo how important a family is, you know, getting stuff done for, for uh, stuff. So, anyway, uh, so he, he's, he's there. And then I got Chris Burnell, that's my equipment manager, and helps out and stuff and, and, and stuff like that. And we just hired a, a new trainer that, you know, that uh, uh, Taylor County Regional Hospital helps provide both schools. I know Taylor County's got one, we got one. And his name is Justin Ramos, and I've really been pleased with him for a few first few weeks he's been around. So, I got a great staff, and I heard a, heard a coach one time say a head coach is only as good as his assistants. And uh, them first few years, 
you know, when you come in a new head coach, you try to try to do everything yourself. And, uh, you know, I was dumb and young then. And the uh, last few years, you know, I, I, my coaches, I let them coach and they do a great job. And, and it, it's just fun having them around and, and uh, they do a great job. And I can't say enough good about them because without them, you know, our program wouldn't be very much. Um, our, our, co our staff and our coaches, we've, uh, you know, coming in last year as a new coach, I, I hired and brought in a couple guys and there was a few guys left over. So uh, really be excited about this year and just because practice has been going on because it's been a lot smoother because last year we were all learning each other and they were trying to learn me and my system and how I do things. And then I was trying to learn them and what roles fit them best. But uh, I, I've noticed as a coach this year, uh, so far in the summer and stuff, we've been, because we've all kind of got the same expectations and we know what we're doing, that, that's things that went a lot smoother. I think that's going to make us, that's going to make us a better football team. I've got coach Andy Stevens that does our offense. Coach Stevens has been a head coach. He was my coach in high school. He does an unbelievable job. He could go be a head coach anywhere he wanted to tomorrow. And we're, extremely thankful that he's here with us at, at Taylor County and he does a he does a great great job for us uh coach Oliver been here for quite a few years now I don't probably seven or eight doing football he does our offensive line does a great job last year again that was one of those things coming in and we were you know he'd done offensive line before but I had my own little tweaks we want to put on it and he's just took it took off with it this year and just uh, you know he's he's doing it just like I would do it so I mean that's a big relief if you've got a line coach that can come in and can coach just like you think you'd coach then you're you're you've got something special uh, coach John Tunin's also doing our offensive line he's a he's a graduate here played at the college so now you've got a and he's also our head JB coach so we've got a uh, we've got a guy who is a, a younger offensive line coach too, working with our guys. Coach Cole Burke uh, hired him this year. He's our defensive line coach. He played for me in high school and also a graduate and played at Camelsville. Was a two or three year starter there at Camelsville. So it's been he's he's been a good addition to work with our young guys. Coach Bill McCullough has. Um, doing our secondary for us this year. And, you know, he's he's coached at Lindsey Wilson. He was there at Adair County with uh, Travis and him when they had those, you know, two or three really good teams right there in a row. So he brings a wealth of experience at, uh, in the secondary for us. Uh, coach uh, Justin Hoosier is coming in. He, he just kind of – he coached for us as an assistant coach last year. This year he's our head middle school football coach. And he's also – he's kind of pulling double duty, working at the high school too, working with linebackers and just wherever we need him. And, uh, you know, again, uh, he's – I think Coach Hoosier is as good as a coach. He, he's, he's as good as a high school football coach as I've been around. And he went down and done the middle school football. A lot of people wouldn't want to do that. They'd feel like they was going down to do something. But I really sold Coach Hoosier on uh, how important it was that we make sure we got that middle school thing right. And he's went down there and doing a great job for us to hopefully help us build for the future. And he's helping us on Friday nights. Uh, we got big coach Marlins coming in. He's doing outside linebackers for us, and uh, man, he's he's just doing a great job. I think uh, you know Marlin brings to the table his relationship with these kids. He's run our middle school and some of our youth stuff around here for a long time, and now all all the kids we have on our high school football team has played for Marlin for a year or two at some point. And so it's good to have that guy. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I come around and I'm on them or I'm hollered at them, and Marlon comes in behind them, slaps them on the tail, and they trust him and they love him. So, you know, that's uh, you need those guys. Um, guys helping us. You know, we got Coach Craig Richards does for lifelong. I don't know, like uh, Franklin was saying, when I was playing high school football, I remember uh, Coach Craig over here being the equipment man. So he's yeah. still doing that for us. Uh, you know, Alec, Alec on here, Williams. Uh, part of the fab three or four here. He, he does a film for us, does a great job, dragged him into that last year. And like Coach said, if you get two or three guys to do some film for you, it makes it so much more easier on Friday nights to know you don't have to worry about that. Him and uh, Mr. Smith, Keyshawn's dad, helps with her film. And then we also got Miss Haley Franklin. She does a great job taking care of her boys all week. And again, all those, you know, I've been, like I said, I've been at four schools now. And if you if you've got a trainer that takes care of your kids and you don't have to worry about that, you got two or three guys that takes care of your film and you don't have to worry about that. You got somebody that takes care of your equipment, you don't have to worry about that. And then you got and then you got five or six good coaches that you know got your kids' as best heart in, you know, got that uh, their best interest in their mind. Then uh, that makes your job a lot easier. And I, we're pretty blessed to have out here at Taylor County. Scott, what you got, brother? 
Well, my, my question, I'll start with Sam, and then Dale, you can go after Coach Sam. Okay. Uh, uh, Sam, with the uh, – assuming everything goes through and we get to play and we go all the way through, tell us who uh, in our district looks very strong as far as the guys – got to play Taylor and Dale with the district play that you're going to get into. Think about who might be at the top of the line against you guys. I know the last three or four years we've been – both schools have been as good as they've been at the same time ever, in my opinion – both at the same time, and I think it's going to be similar again this year. What's the competition look like, Sam, within the district? Yeah, I, I think we've got a good district schedule. I think you're, you know, again, I, I mean, I, we've got to go compete every Friday night. We're, you know, the, the, no matter who you're playing, we're capable. I, mean, I think you kind of seen that last year, and I think last, you know, I think look from the outside looking in, you're going to think, you know, us in Glasgow is is who you're, you know, you would think is going to be battling for the district, but. If you looked at last year there towards the next to last game, Glasgow were three games from the end. Glasgow goes down to Casey County, who we almost run off the field. And uh, they about got beat at home, had to, you know, have a miracle score. Then we turn around, who they about run a dare off the field, and dare played us to the end tooth and nail down there at their place last year. So you can't take nothing for granted. you got to go to work every single week. But I do think, uh, you know, I think Glass, I think Glasgow is going to be, you know, your big game that you got battling the district. I really look for a dare to be a, to be a lot better uh, football team. I thought I thought they done a great job last year. I think he's got a lot. I think he's got a lot coming back. Um, you know, anytime you, I I think when you travel, I I really feel like Casey County is kind of a hard place to go play on the road uh, there. So when you, <laughs> it's just always seemed like that Casey County teams I've coached there, been there, everything. Casey County teams play well at home, and so when you have to get on the road and go down to Casey County, and you uh, sometimes that fog comes off that creek <laughs> down there, and it just builds a different atmosphere. So I think that's a hard place to come on the road. Um, you know, and then you you still got to you know you still got to get by Hart County, and so again we just got to play every week in the district. I think it's going to be it's going to be uh, very competitive, and uh, hopefully, like I said last night on the radio show we did, our goal is just to try to get better every week, every day, not just every week, every day. I want to be a better football team today than we was yesterday, and if we'll do that every day, uh, every little team brings their own challenges that you got to play, uh, so you can. So sometimes when you're even playing the best team, uh, the way they do their formations and their stuff, you, you got to learn from it and grow because you may run into somebody that runs that same stuff and executes it better in the third round of the playoffs. And I thought that was one thing we done good last year is we just grew week by week, and hopefully that's what we can do do this year, this year too. Uh, as far as us, Coach Franklin, uh, you know, I think we're, we're in a tough Class A district. You know, you look at our – uh, district last year, you know, us, Bethlehem, or Holy Cross, Louisville, Holy Cross, any three of us could have won it. You know, our, our first round, we were beat up a little bit, didn't have Malachi healthy, and almost, uh, you know, uh, pulled it out without him, you know. And so, uh, but Bethlehem, you know, they, they graduated a lot, uh, but they'll still be good. I've heard they've had a few transfers, uh, you know, move in this, uh, this past summer and stuff uh, for some Barstown kids, kind of add some athletes you know, to them. And uh, now they'll, you know, I don't know how good they'll be at quarterback. That kid, you know, was a four-year starter like Hash was, and he made them go. But, you know, I still think that Coach Walkover is doing a good job. And and I'm kind of like Coach Marple on that one. We got to go Bethlehem and play. And when you go over Bethlehem and play, it's tough. You know, we've been there, like he was saying, about Casey County and stuff like that. So we'll have to have our best game over there to win. And then uh, we got Louisville Holy Cross. Louisville Holy Cross lost some, but they got their best two players back. They got their quarterback back, and they got that uh, uh, tailback back. And so, you know, they're the, the the district champs. They made it to the Final Four last year, uh, like we have been in the last couple of years. And so, you know, I think they're looking for a high regards. I think in Class A projections right now, Holy Cross is ranked seventh, Bethlehem is ranked ninth, and we're ranked tenth. So three of the top ten teams in the same district. You know, so, uh, you know, that's uh, that says a lot. Fort Knox, unfortunately, had to drop football this year because of COVID restrictions and stuff. So we only got two district games. We got Bethlehem and we got Holy Cross. You know, I, I, I'm i like Coach Marples. I feel like we got a good chance if we stay healthy to, for a district championship and a regional crown. And we're just trying to get better day by day, take these games one time, at, one game at a time. And hopefully by the time we get to uh, Bethlehem, which we'll, if, if everything goes good, you know, we'll have one, two, three, looking at the schedule now, five games 
under our belt before we play Bethlehem. Hopefully we'll be playing well and at our best and peaking good. And we play them in back-to-back -back weeks and we can put our best product out there and, and uh, you know, give uh, Eagle football a chance to be district champs and compete for another region. Well, I want to I want to we've talked a lot about your team and a lot about your coaching staff and you guys have given us a little bit of background about where you've been. So I want to know on each of you, I know you y'all have coached a long time, coached a lot of things, but on your football, just, just talking about football, what what is some what is one thing, one superstition that you guys have that that is a is a non-negotiable? You gotta do it every Friday night or every Thursday night or whatever that is. So, I mean, what is that one thing? And I know you got one, whether you wear your socks inside out or you, you put on the same shirt or whatever. What is one thing, like one superstition that we can always count on from Sam Marple and Dell Estes? <laughs> Who's going first? Hey, Sam, you go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Sam. <clears throat> I don't know. You, uh, I don't say I do it all the time, but one thing I do like to do when I come out on the football field, I walk, uh, even if I get off the bus or come here and – or if I'm at our place home on Friday night, when I walk out of the field, I like to touch our goalpost, walk the field and touch the other goalpost. I don't know why that is, and it ain't like I don't think we can't play if we do that, but when I was, when you get off the bus as a player, uh, you would always get off so the coaches take you out to walk the field. I would always touch one goalpost and kind of do my little trot. You know, you thought you was tough and had you, you, you know, you gear and your uniform off. And I'd touch the other goalpost, and usually the other team have some kickers or something over there, and, you know, you could stare them down like you were tough. So I guess I just stuck that from playing. I usually touch one goalpost, walk down and touch the other post, and come back. I still catch myself doing that and just kind of walking back, seeing what the crowd looks like, who's in the crowd, you know, stuff like that. So, Dale? Yeah. Uh, I've never been what you would call really a big superstitious guy, but I do, I, I will say one, and you, some of y'all may find a little humor or whatever, but uh, whether it's in a road game or a home game, uh, before them kids start rolling in, if it's, a, if it's a road game, I bring my pillow and I'm going to sleep. That's some of my best time I get to sleep is uh, if it's a 45 minute drive or a 30 or an hour or whatever, my assistant coach is on the bus with me knows, don't let nobody bother me. I'm, I'm gonna take me a little power nap and then we're at home uh, after we get the kids and stuff in there and the coaches, you know, got their duties and stuff like that, I'll close my office door, kick back in my seat a little bit and uh, take me a little 30 minute power nap, just kind of refresh my brain and mind and stuff like that and things like that. Be honest with you, sometimes that's the best sleep I've had all week, especially <laughs> with that week of practice and things of that nature. But, you know, I always take me a little power nap for the game for whatever reason. I've, I've done it for a few years. It seems to help. And, uh, you know, uh, some coaches laugh at me. Uh, especially when I get on the bus, they're like, we're just going to Green County. I don't care. I'll have my pillow and I'll lay down for 10 minutes the uh, whole way over and, and try to get me the best sleep I can get a, a, in that short period of time. Coach, hey, Coach, 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 Coach Franklin, did you ever have one? Uh, a nap? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't take those all the time. You were the head football coach at Taylor County at one time. Did you have a superstition? Yeah, I knew that boy Cam was going to beat us by 70. That's my superstition. <laughs> hey, I swear they had 16 players on defense. There ain't no way to get only 11. <laughs> I don't know if I really had any superstitions. I, I just prayed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I do know this. Dale's superstition is what Alec does every day at work. <laughs> <laughs> He's not denying it, is he? No, we'll, we'll I don't. Have, I don't. I'll have to talk to Brandon Gupton to see and get him to remove the pillow from Actually, the classroom. I think Todd takes the naps. He just like disappears for time. <laughs> At least he's got two kids. There's a reason he's a little tired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alec, you got another question for the guys? Well, we'll go around one more time. Yeah. Yes, um, of course, we talked about the district games you all have this season. What's some of the non-district games that y'all are really looking forward to this season? You want me to go? Sure, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I'll read our schedule real quick and I'll comment. We open up with LaRue, and then we play Green, and then we just today picked up Kavarna where Fort Knox dropped. Kavarna had to uh, change the schedule a little bit. So they reached out to me, we'll play Kavarna. Then we got Metcalf, and then we got Taylor. And then, of course, we got Bethlehem, Louisville, Holy Cross. And then at the end of the year, we got Adair and Monroe County. 
tell them schedule for a class A school. You know, you look on there, there's only two class, three class A teams now that I got Caverna today. But I'd be, it, it, it would be wrong of me not to say the kids and the fans, they look for, I'm, I'm just glad Coach Marple and I, we could work out the telecounty game. Uh, you know, we both had open week on fall break. And we could say whatever we want, do what we want, but the kids look forward to that, and there's people in this community look forward to that game. And I know there's going to be restrictions this year as far as fans and stuff can be there, but there is ways they can watch it on stream. You know, Coach Marple, I found out today, you know, I mean, you was talking about last night, uh, it's $70 and they can, for, and they can on that stream stuff, and they can watch every game they want for the whole year all the way across the United States. So well, that's can, can you finance that? <laughs> If they, uh, that's a little higher than what I've done because if you run it on a paycheck like me, you might need that finance. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, you know, the Teller County game, the Teller County game is one that the kids look forward to. But, you know, I always look forward to uh, uh, competing against Green and LaRue as well. And, and then another one, you know, a good buddy of mine, I'm good buddies with the Pettits and with John Pettit taking back over Moreau County. We picked him up last game of the year down there. And that'll be a, that'll be a good test for us going into the playoffs. You know, he, by then, he'll have them rolling again, and they'll be playing well. And, uh, you know, so that's a good test for us. But for us as a Class A school, you know, uh, I feel like we always play a pretty tough schedule, you know. And uh, uh, Coach uh, Franklin all ago was talking about bowls and stuff. I can remember my first few years playing Danvils, and, and Coach Franklin, uh, we, I can remember us being down 41 nothing at the end of the first quarter every time we played them too. So, I mean, you know, I've been there. But, you know, I think it also prepares your kids. You know, I, I like to have some tough games in there. But, you know, we got some games in there that's kind of been, you know, the Greens and the Taylors is kind of uh, the ones that the kids look forward to and the fans. And I'm glad we were able to still work those out this year and be able to play because those are the games the players will remember. 20 years down the road when they're working at Walmart or construct whatever it is they're doing, those are the games they're going to talk about. They're going to talk about those, remember those memories. I know me as a player, I remember every Taylor County game I played in. I remember the Green County game. So I'm glad that we were able to work that out and, and be able to play those. And hopefully this year, you know, they can be a great our, – our Camelzo Taylor County game the last few years, man, true, it's been some good ones, you know, and I, I'm hoping this year we can do the same thing. Yeah, Hill. All right. Sam? I told uh, the year I come here with uh, Coach Hilton, I guess that was 2015 or whatever, and Coach Estes was the head coach at the other place. And we that the Taylor Camelsville game was at Camelsville. And so, um, you know, we went and played that year. And that, that game, it was really exciting. It was zero to zero all the way up into the fourth quarter. Sure and I'm just about, and then, you know, we, we got a couple and got a little lucky there towards the end. But, anyways, it was an awesome game. And I remember leaving that game and I, uh, my dad, my dad still comes to all football games, and I and he told me that I told him that day, I said that was the coolest atmosphere that I've ever coached football in, and that was there at Campbell's. And I still, I still love to go down to Campbellsville when we go on the road to play those games because I like that field, that atmosphere, because it's it's compact and it's like there's so many people and the lawn chairs all around in. So, anyways, I definitely agree. You know, that's a, I think that's a special game. I think it brings the best out. Of, I think it brings the best out of our kids. It brings the best out of our community. Um, I turned around like there last year when we scored a touchdown and looked up the fans. It was just here in that place. Everybody in Campbell's, everybody in Taylor County, Campbellsville's there. So, uh, you know, glad glad we get to continue that little part of history and put another little knock in that belt this year. But as you go down, uh, let me let me throw in just as a and I know Tim would want me to too as AD just a reminder that the game is at Campbellsville High School this year. It is. And, uh, and, of course, again, as Dale says, it's going to be live streamed if you can't make it because there are going to be some restrictions on attendance and all those good things. So uh, uh, you, you won't miss it uh, if you want to log in on the NFHS, National Federation of High School website, and log in there and uh, buy you a ticket to watch it online. Yeah. Um, Scott, for the boys. Wait, Sam's got to go through his schedule. Oh, my quick. fault. Oh. My fault. Oh, sorry. Yeah, right. I Green, Green County, first – Green County first week. And, you know, I'm nervous about that one because same thing we was talking about last night. We got seven, eight days to put a summer's worth and learn how to play football. Um, you know, we lost – you know, we've, we've got – we lost kids off last year's team that, uh, you know, you ain't going to be able to replace. So, we're learning how to become our own team again this year. So, that first one makes me really nervous, not so much about who you're going to play, but um, – Hey, Coach, you know. when all else fails, just turn around and give it to Wes. You'll be yeah, awesome. and it helps. It, it does help. But so we got the, we got Green County second game. I think we got a really big test for us. We're playing Mercer County. Um, 
So they'll be that'll be a good football team. It'll be a good it'll be a good measuring stick for us at the start of the year. And I think that's important. I thought last year that was one good thing. We actually went and took a pretty good whipping at Simon Kenton last year. But I thought that ball game probably turned us in to help make us one of the, you know, I don't know if we'd end up being the football team we was if we wouldn't have played that game. So we're gonna go play Mercer County and then uh, your uh, Casey and Hart's in the district. We got the Camelsville game we've talked about. Uh, at the end of the year, we end up our last two non-district games, Bourbon County on the road, which uh, I, I thought they was a solid little football team last year. I think they'll be a very solid little football team again this year. You have to, I mean, that was a really, really physical game last year. And so uh, that's going to be a balance. And then you, you got that game, Marion County. And I, I really debated as a coach because that's the week before the playoffs. Should we add that game or not? Because I, I hate to play those games. They're out of district, but then you're about to play playoffs, so you're getting up for, for something. But then that's kind of like that trap game in between. But us in Marion County had worked out to play for the next couple years. And I really thought when I come here as a coach, I thought that was a game that we needed to play, like Dale is talking about with the Campbellsville and the Green Counties. I really think Taylor County and Marion County ought to play every time they get a chance because, you know, we're very comparable in size. They're right next door. It's a big rivalry basketball, basketball like type of thing. And so we was able to put that on there. So that's 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 what we did. And again, I don't know a lot about Marion County. I hadn't watched them play football in a few years, but again, it's just setting at a it's setting at a bad time. So you you know it, but that's our job as coach, make sure your kids are up to play every week. Scott, last one. My last question is, sitting where you guys are right now today, you know where your teams are at. You guys know your players. You, you know where you got to get. For both of you guys, if you make the regional game this year, the region championship game this year, it's because your team improved so drastically at what? Compared to what it is right now. Dale, go ahead. Okay. Uh I feel like we, if we're going to get there, we're going to have to play sound defense. Uh, offensively, I'm not as worried as much because, like I said, we've got a few kids back that's been a very integral part of our success the last few years. I feel like we can do enough as far as getting the ball to some of our athletes with our quarterback and Reggie and Blaze and get into some of those kids, you know, I feel like we'll be all right. But we've lost a ton off the defensive side of the ball the last two years. So them first few games, we have to – and we're going to get tested early because LaRue County is going to come in big, strong. They're going to run right at our throats. We're going to find out, you know, if we want to tackle people or not. So if we can improve defensively and go out there and be sound and fundamental, which I think we got the personnel to do it and stay healthy, I feel like we can give ourselves a chance – to be in that regional title game, win that district, win that region, and stuff like that. Because offensively, I truly believe that we'll be all right and we'll be able to score a few points, you know, but we got to be able to stop some people as well. And that's one of the things we're really working on hard, and we'll find out, and, and we'll get better. We'll get better at it. Our kids will get better at it. And by hopefully, like I said, uh, hopefully by Bethlehem, you know, we'll be ready to go because, you know, we play those first five games, and don't get me wrong, ain't nobody more competitive than me, and I want to win every one of them. But I look at them like scrimmages, you know, because uh, we want to beat that Bethlehem and Louisville Holy Cross. Now, what the state has done the last two years, you know, with these rankings and stuff, you, those games being a little bit more now. But, you know, not as serious. You can still set yourself up pretty good if I can beat Bethlehem and Holy Cross. But defense is our key. We, we've got to improve on the defensive side of the ball as far because we've lost a lot. We've played good defense the last couple of years, but, man, we have lost some critical kids on that side of the ball, and we got to have some new kids step up this year. I'd say with us is uh, it's going to be a lot like last year. I think we're sitting in the same – with some different positions, we're sitting in the same boat. I think if you looked at Taylor County when we come in here last year, you knew you had some talent, some kids that could do some thing, but you also knew there were some big holes and some and some gaps and some people that had to develop. And there was a lot of unknown with new coaches and all that stuff. But I really think if you look at us and we're playing for a regional championship this year, there's about – five to six kids on our football team that has to develop and get better every day. I mean, we have to do a good job as coaches of development and they grow. We were in that same boat last year, okay? I, I, I came home last year at the start of the summer. I said, Lord, they're going to run me out of this town and one week we're awful. But we but we've done a good job of developing those kids and those kids come on. We had, you know, three or four sophomores. We had our sophomores carried a core of our, our football team last year. 
last year of those roll type players. And we got about five of those kids. You know, last year it was in our line and up front and how we were going to do that. This year it's more in our secondary, but it's still, it's teaching those kids those fundamentals and us get, getting better better every week. And, that, and that's what we got to do. If we do that, if we're, if we're able to stay healthy, that's always key. If we're able to stay healthy and if we're able to develop four or five kids who can come out there and, and hold, do their job, just do their job you know, and learn that role, then I, I think we've got a good shot. You know, I like – I really like our football team. I, uh, again, I think we're ahead – me and Mr. McQuarrie was talking earlier, I think we're ahead on offense right now. I think we're a better offensive football team today than, than we are a defensive football team. But when I watch it, when I look at our defense out there and I see our kids, I see the potential too. It's just, you know, you've just got to work to get to that potential. So, I think that's it. We've just got to develop four or five kids that's going to have big roles and uh, will be as good as, as they become. Well, all right. Well, guys, we certainly thank you all today for, yeah. for joining the Fab Three podcast since Ben Bertram is – he can't ever join us. He's, He's in a college but, class, probably. Well, oh, it's yeah. virtual. They don't go to class. <laughs> <my God. laughs> and so you got, you know, you got Mr. Franklin down there. It's retired. It's hard to get Scott because he's always at the lake or he's always. I worked this morning. Three hours, man. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you, Scott. Anyway. <laughs> Again, we'd like to thank everyone for watching the Hatcherado uh, Fab Four podcast. And uh, make sure you go out and see Danny and Daniel out there at 5911. New Lebanon Road. Give them a phone call, 270-469-6357. Until next week, Dale, thank you for joining us. Sam, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. Appreciate it. Until next week, have a great day.